And welcome back. You know, her credentials and talents, nothing to laugh at. No, definitely not. She's got some skills, but you better believe that as a stand-up comedian, actor, writer, producer, director, the list goes on, she's left a lot of people in stitches. And let's not forget podcaster. Oh, yeah, that too. That's right. Whitney Cummings' Touch Me Tour is actually heading to Grand Rapids on March 5th, but before then... How about we talk to Whitney today, right here on Fox 17 Morning Mix. Good morning to <laughs> hey, you. Cheers, I've got coffee too. There you are, Whitney. was not ready to be for you to cut to me right then. I'm glad you didn't see me putting the Kahlua in it five seconds ago. <laughs> you too? Oh my gosh. Wait a second, now, this is just I, coffee. I, I, more, I this keep it clear, coffee. you know what I'm saying down here. Mm. But good morning. You think this sparkling personality's natural? <laughs> Whitney, it seems to me like you just weren't busy enough, so you needed to add more to your plate. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> you know what's wild? I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you as someone who's stand up I've, I've i've been lucky enough to do television and movies and and podcasting but you know live touring is the thing that means the most to me because i think we get very uh misled thinking you know that everyone hates each other when you spend too much time on twitter you get this idea that no one wants to hear comedy that we should all just pack up and move to santa fe and make soap or you know uh, quit or do safe comedy or not be brave and then you go out and you perform and you see that that's not the case so it's very important for comedians right now to tour live just to make sure uh, everything we're reading on Twitter about you know comedians to just shut up and never say anything isn't true but also I'm gonna say one more thing which is that uh, when the world opened up I booked a ton of dates assuming half would get canceled <laughs> because they were getting canceled for two years so by the time the world opened up we were like let's just book 60 cities assuming we'll be able to do like 30 you know uh -huh. um, so yeah I'm gonna I am not gonna be able to have biological children uh, but <laughs> That's probably okay for everyone. <laughs> so I think the big thing is when people go to one of your shows, you kind of want to prepare them for the type of humor they're going to see. Or mm. don't you want to prepare them because you like that little shock and awe? <laughs> you know what? Uh, yes, you make a good point. Uh, I just like to prepare people by just telling them, them in general because these days, I think over the pandemic, comedians got slightly confused about what our job is and we started like lecturing people about how to vote even though... The only thing we know anything about is um, uh, what whiskey you should mix with which vodka in order to be able to make your flight the next morning and <laughs> adultery and depression and, you know, generally bad choices is kind of our thing. So telling people all of a sudden we're like a moral compass, you know, look, edibles are legal now in California. So things got a little <laughs> wonky for a lot of people. But the one thing I do like to say is that I do not talk about politics at all on the show. So even if you don't think women are funny, uh, or don't even like comedy. Come just to find a safe space for an hour and a half to not <laughs> hear go. anyone talk about COVID or politics. I love that. The, what a great sell. Mm -hmm. you, know? you may not even love comedy. <laughs> you may not even love women. But just come here because we're not going to talk <laughs> fine, politics. Fine, fine. That's fine. We're not going to talk politics. So it's all good. Hey, what about this podcast? Can you tell me a little bit about the podcast? I can. You know, the podcast started a couple years ago. Um, the business of, you know, television and movies, I don't have to tell you, has been changing so rapidly. And just when you sort of figure out how to make television, the whole business changes. <laughs> and you're like, like, you know, I used to do multicam shows like Two Broke Girls and Roseanne and, you know, which went great. Um, and uh, I just, by the time I was doing specials and stuff, you know, it was like all my friends were no offense to them, but a lot of my guy friends were just being boring for two or three hours into a microphone and it was turning into a business. So I was like, what if I actually put some effort into that? I wonder what happened. And though I already had some fear because I was like, you know, maybe just been brainwashed to believe that no one really wants to hear a woman talk for three hours if they don't get to sleep with her at the end. Like, I just was like, I don't have any data that people want to hear a woman just sort of talk for a while. So, so that was my insecurity because turns out there's a ton of people who do. Yep. And um, the podcast space is a different space than comedy. You know, comedy, as a woman, I always feel like I have to be, you know, uh, totally on my game. You cannot, if you, if one joke doesn't work, like the entire like female comedy community is like on your like shoulders, you know, mm -hmm. it's like I let everyone down. Now there's people in this audience being like women aren't funny and I'm, you know, uh, the strengthening a stereotype or something, you know, there's all that weird pressure, but not with podcasting. There's something, um, you know, just really natural about a conversational. I think we all realized also, 
you know, comedians backstage before shows were always, you know, talking and doing bits and being silly. And, you know, as people that aren't great with intimacy, we were all like, should we just monetize these conversations? Uh, how can we make these conversations not be a complete waste of time? Let's like start a business where we just do this. And so we, uh, we monetized our friendships, which I, according to my therapist is toxic, but it's been very, uh, enjoyable. And, um, I've had a blast. Well, we can't. And wait. I think it's made me a better comedian. Yeah. Well, we can't wait to see your energy. Of course, it's very contagious. We love that. So get back to your Kahlua. We got to get back to our show. But we welcome you here in Grand Rapids coming up on March 5th. Thanks so much for your and time. And wearing not one robe, two robes. Two oh, robes. Two. Oh, that's, robe. that's, that's, <laughs> that's that's so I'm literally the female Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> <laughs> WhitneyCummings.com slash tour for more information. We'll be right back.